So we turn, <laughs> we turn to the expert. The good news is, is I do. You, I, I do. I'm, I'm sure glad because, oh, you know, it could have been an F3. It could have been an F4. <laughs> it's true. What is an F2? It's really how tornadoes are ranked, and it's based on wind. It's an intensity scale. And you know what? Back in 1971, Ted Fujita actually came up with this scale. Now, in 2007, it changed. It became the enhanced Fujita scale. And as you look at the screen, you'll be able to tell where tornadoes now rank. And this is all based on wind damage because the Salt Lake tornado happened back in 1999. It's still classified as an F2. Same wind speeds associated with it. And as you can see, an EF2 packs 111 to 135 mile per hour winds. Now, this will destroy a mobile home. We know the damage it did in Salt Lake. This will definitely rock a foundation. It will damage the buildings, roofs, and siding. So we know that this is strong, and we don't see that typically happen in Utah. And those numbers really just tell quite the story. 111 mile per hour winds, frightening as that tornado rolled through. Another look at the path where it developed near Pacific Avenue and Concord Street. We kind of take that view of the city, which gives you an idea on Google Maps of where this rolled through. And as Craig mentioned in his story, it headed toward Rio Grande. And as it rolled through, it jumped through Temple Square and toward the Delta Center, which is now Vivint Smart Home Arena. But a lot of us knew it as the Delta Center back in the day. And it really did damage a lot of those windows. I remember that, that one sad fatality at outdoor retailer in the downtown area. People were injured at the LDS Conference Center as that tornado just kind of packed a punch. Extensive damage as we saw in that package at Memory Grove. It's something to remember, and a lot of folks were weighing in on social media today. More than 150 homes damaged in the abs. So that was the part of town that it rolled through. And at the end of the day, this was something that folks will be talking about for years to come, that 20-year anniversary, kind of putting us all back in that spot. I remember the trees near the Capitol, uprooted. I was young. We had just moved here. And boy, you can never forget that. All right, calmer conditions today, which is nice to see you can see most of the activity on the satellite is over to the east of us with clearer skies throughout the entire Beehive State. We'll take it. It was a nice day, actually, as those temperatures stayed below average, which is right around 92. You can see even at this hour a few clouds wanting to pop up, but not bad. Our highest wind gusts in the double digits in places like Salt Lake hitting a 23 mile per hour gust. Gustier in Moab, 28 miles per hour in Cedar City. In the north, this was associated with a dry cold front. That cold front moved through our high temperatures, staying in the 80s for a bulk of the state, 90 in Provo and Delta, but look at southern Utah. One of those weather sensors in St. George picking up 89 as that daytime high in Utah's Dixie. Some may have gotten a little hotter in the low 90s in and around Washington County, but way cooler than we typically are. Right now, we've got 70s, 60s, and 80s, 69 in South Jordan up there in Park City. We're sitting at 60 degrees. It's going to be a brisk start to the day tomorrow, and tomorrow's a big day for some southern Utah kids. It's the first day of school. Futurecast shows us what to expect as we get through our Monday morning and the next several hours. We get through Monday, and we've got pretty clear skies. Plenty of sunshine, but we've got this flow from the west. That will keep our cooler temperatures for our Monday. And then Tuesday, a ridge of high pressure will start to build. Notice we get a few more cloud cover on Tuesday. Wednesday, we'll see hotter temperatures, and Thursday is where we're going to top out in those high 90s. Back to school for a lot of central and southern Utah areas. That includes Washington County. Tomorrow, Uinta District, August 14th. So as we get through this week, there will be several places that start school. Where did the summer go? It feels a little cooler as we head into tomorrow. Those 80s want to stick around 84 in Price, 86 in Cedar City. The Four Corners area will see some 90s. Not too bad. Here's a look at what to expect for St. George. Those 90s will turn back into 10-somethings. It's a hot week to start school in southern Utah. 103 by Wednesday. Breezy conditions as another dry cold front will make its presence known by the end of the week and drop our temperatures. 62 for the overnight. That's going to feel pretty brisk tomorrow morning. You're heading out early. Maybe you'll put out the trash cans, go for a run. It's going to feel cool. 80s turn into 90s, then high 90s by Thursday. And then here comes that dry cold front. It knocks down those numbers by Friday. <clears throat> We're in the upper 80s, low 90s, Rick. So really not too bad. But you thought the heat was gone, and then Thursday shows up and says, nope, let me go ahead and flex. I've got a 98 for Salt Lake City. All right, summer is hanging on, even though the kids are heading back to school. Can't believe that. Yeah, all right, thanks a lot. It's